Hey guys, welcome back to Frack Daddy Barbecue. It is officially 2020. So this is gonna be the very first video of the new year. If this is your first time watching Frack Daddy Barbecue, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell right next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on what we're gonna do. And if you're one of my loyal followers, thank you so much for coming back. On this video, we are gonna be doing a review and a cook on a piece of cast iron that I got from Stargazer. So let's take a look. So here we have a 10 and a half inch Stargazer skillet. So you guys know that I am a Lodge cast iron fanatic. And I'm gonna tell you what, I'm impressed with what I see right here. So let's go in a little bit of detail and we'll tell you what I like about it. What really catches my eye about this new skillet that I got from Stargazer is one, the coloring, two, the detail that they put into the skillet, which this is every look that every skillet has that comes from Stargazer. It's got this great handle. It's got this beautiful handle right here. And it's also got this V-notch cut out, which I believe it's gonna do for less heating of your handle, which you can cook longer on your stove and it's not gonna get so hot. So what I like about the back of this skillet, one, they have their name engraved into the back of the cast iron skillet. Two, it is American made, made in Pennsylvania. And also you can see it's a 10 and a half inch skillet. Let me grab my lodge skillet so I can show you the differences from this one to my lodge. So here we have my lodge. I believe this is a 10 inch. So as you can tell the differences in this already is one, it's got two pour spouts. And another thing you can see is you can actually see how rough the bottom of this skillet is. And as you see in the, other, in the stargazer, it is very, very smooth. And another thing to point out that this one has that the stargazer doesn't have it doesn't have your pour spouts. But from what I'm understanding is this lip right here will allow you to pour anywhere you want around the whole thing. And as you can tell, another big seller to me is this Stargazer has a much bigger handle than your launch. Because I mean, look how close you are. If you got this on your burner, you know, it's gonna get pretty hot. This handle will get extremely hot because there's no gap in here to prevent heating of your handle. So, as of now, I'm sold on a stargazer. So, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take it over the sink, and this will be the first and only time that I'm gonna use soap. Now, the reason I'm gonna use soap now is because just to make sure that there's no dirt left on here, then we're gonna take it to this uh, stove, and we're gonna heat it up, we're gonna add a thin coat of oil, and we're gonna tell you what we're gonna cook first. After rinsing it out with some soap and water and just adding a very thin coat of oil, I wanted to show y'all how beautiful this piece of cast iron is after just a little bit of oil. It is so beautiful. Let me show you what we're gonna cook tonight in our brand new piece of cast iron, which is a Gordon Ramsay inspired steak recipe so here we have a little little filet manoir that melissa picked out which was i think two dollars she put we paid a little for. under two dollars a little under two dollars i'm a cheap date but hey you get what she likes and she's happy so what we have right here is a 35 day aged ribeye it's probably i'm gonna guess about an inch to an inch and a quarter i tell you what this is beautiful now as you smell it it's kind of got like a funk to it like blue cheese and that's where the aging process comes into because mold is growing on your steak but it's a good mold so this is gonna be my very first time ever eating dry aged beef and I'm excited. So when you have a piece of meat as beautiful as this, all you wanna put on here is a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper to get the true taste of this beautiful aged steak. Now we're gonna take some coarse ground pepper. 
little bit of pepper. Well, I like a little heavy pepper. By the way, I'm actually using kosher salt, if some of y'all are wondering. So I have my skillet about on a medium to a high heat. I'm going to add some olive oil. You want an oil that's kind of a neutral flavor. So I also wanted to let y'all know that we put the we had these steaks coming up to room temp for about 20 to 30 minutes. And that's what you want to do so these steaks cook very evenly. So this skillet's been on medium to high heat for less than two minutes and it's already at temperature. Ooh, listen to that sizzle. Now y'all normally know I do not cook steak inside. This is my first time doing it inside the house. I'm very excited to do this. So it's been about five minutes and I want y'all to know that there is absolutely not that much heat. So the closer you get to the skillet, the warmer it is. But the further back it is, it's still cool as day. So it's been about six minutes. Let's give these a flip. Oh man, look at that rush. That is exactly what you're looking for when you do cast iron or a steak in a cast iron skillet. it's time to add some Kerrygold butter. Never had too much butter, can you babe? Nope. Now let me turn this down a little bit so we don't burn the butter. Now it's time to start bathing the steak in some butter. Baste away my little buddy. Baste away. We may find us a new way to cook steaks. What do you think, babe? Oh, so far, so great. How would you describe the smell? Very aromatic. Yes. The garlic, the thyme, the rosemary is just filling up the house. And you might be wondering why mine's still in there. I like it basically no pink. That's why it's still cooking away. Like shoe leather. Not really. So that's why she's still in there, going strong. Okay, so... We're going to flip them so we can baste the other side because they're pretty much done. And we want to baste this other side because we want to be fair not to give them the same shape. So, we're not going to let this go to waste. You got all this butter, this garlic, these herbs. So you know what we're going to put in here? We're going to add some mushrooms. We took our herbs out just so they don't burn. Oh, you missed one. There it is. So I'm just going to season these with a little bit of salt and pepper. Now we're going to add some vermouth to deglaze the pan, finish off the mushrooms, and we're going to be golden. That's about maybe less than a quarter of an ounce. Mm, mm, man. That added a lot of aroma. Yeah, it did. And then you just take your wooden spoon, scrape the bottom of your freaking beautiful, beautiful pan, and all the chunks that were stuck onto the bottom now come off. So I also want to mention to you guys, this thing's been cooking 20 minutes. Normally I'd have to pick up a skillet with a hot pad or a towel. I am doing this barehanded. This is awesome. So we're gonna finish off by letting this white wine reduce. The mushrooms get nice and soft. Gonna pour it over the steaks and then we're gonna eat. I'm so excited. So the mushrooms are done. Let me get some of these beautiful mushrooms 
going to place them on top, and let's check out this pour spigot that comes with it. Ooh. I'm impressed. Don't forget about Milo, guy. He has feelings too. More mushroom than meat. She Ooh. doesn't really care for mushrooms. Look at that garlic. I'd rather have all garlic. That's very nice. And that is what they call a pan sauce. Let's get close to that. So the steaks are done. Let me cut into the steak, even though this isn't the star of the show because that cast iron is the star of the show. I want to try the steak while it's hot. So let me cut into it and see how I did. y'all this is my first time ever trying aged beef I would have to say I think I know that temp pretty good mmm kind of get some nutty kind of woody kind of you know that little bit of a funk that's really really good I really enjoy this to be honest with you I'm gonna tell you what I think I'm going to be a, an official new fan of cooking steaks in cast iron. They're so delicious. Now let me try one with my mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Mm. Tell you what, mushrooms are delicious. Everything's delicious. If anyone cares, my steak turned out perfect too. Love it. So this is the aftermath of cooking the steaks. I'm gonna take it over the sink, run it under some hot water, rinse this out, and then we'll come back over here and we'll show you what we're gonna do. Guys, I didn't even have to really put no elbow grease into this. Just a little bit of hot water came clean right out. And you can see it's starting to get the discoloration like a normal piece of cast iron. So the more you cook on it, the more seasoning it's going to take and the darker it's going to get. So what we're going to do, just put a nice thin coat of oil. We're going to put our favorite Crisco, which I think it's been around for a very long time. And that's what my old cowboy friends live in trust by. So that's what I've been using for a very long time since I've actually started to learn about cast iron care and I also recommend just getting an old rag cutting it up and turning it into your new oiling pan or oil rag to take care of your oh. cast iron I just want to say I am super super impressed with this skillet I tell you what we're gonna be testing this thing day and day and then we're gonna come back in about a month or two and we're gonna give you a full in-depth review of this skillet. So guys, I just wanna say thank you for watching this video. Also a big shout out to Stargazer for sending this cast iron to Frack Daddy Barbecue. So we're gonna leave a link to their website to where you can go check them out. They also have an Instagram, go check them out as well. And if this is your first time, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, so you can see when Frack Daddy Barbecue puts out more Stargazer cast iron cooking videos. Just want to say thank you for watching and have a great day.